this this was had a biannual inspection received a sticker i looked at the truck today and that sticker was taken off the windshield what by the order of the bot now every time i've ever had a truck that was put they don't take the inspection sticker they might record who inspected it they put a out of service order the big red flag on the, on the window that wasn't on the window the inspection sticker was gone. That 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 that's not DOT does not take inspection stickers. DOT off. did take the inspection wrong. sticker. I've never seen that. Uh, every time I've ever been on the side of the road with a state trooper DOT worker. Right. Highway enforcement. I've I've dealt with them before, believe it or not, what, yeah. a time or two, and and I've been put out of service sure. on several occasions. I don't know anything about it. I'm a locksmith, but I can tell you that's where the, that's why the sticker is missing. We didn't we didn't take that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Lowly locks. Yeah. Front and rear springs. Uh, we've covered yeah, that. I think mean, we covered that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is the big one. Out of service criteria. The left front. The report says that the number one axle, which is your front axle, passenger side, broken spring in the spring axle, and the brake actuator. When you step on your brake pedal on an air brake chalk, that left hand side, that center rod comes out, and the spring forces it back to come back off, so the brakes cool and, and reset. That spring, as you can, you can, it's hard to see in the picture if you don't know what you're looking for, but that coil spring is actually broken and broken and on down on the rod. That's immediate out of service criteria on the side of the road. That's the reason why the truck is red flagged where it sat. On the right hand side is shoes and drums that are, are ineffective. Um, shoes weren't touching the rear drums on the right hand side. The drums are what we call bell. They're caused by excessive heat and trucks heavy. Um, when as they wear, manufacturer allows um, three thirty seconds of an inch on that size drum. These are way, way over that. There's no way to measure them on the truck, but I can tell from experience that that's well in excess of that. The shoes are starting to delaminate and come apart from the back of material, which means they'll lap over and lock out. Um, that ineffective brake caused it to um, be required to be repaired before it could be put back into service on the right hand side. Kevin? Once again, we're talking about brakes. I mean, you get a brake can, I think it's a, it's a service side only 24 can, probably. I don't yeah. think it's a 30, I think it's a 24. It's a brake can. It's, it's what, $60, $70 in, in, in routine maintenance. I mean, let's, let's, yeah, let's be honest here. <laughs> Everybody here owns a vehicle. You need brakes, you need brakes. There's no reason to dispose of a vehicle. It had, it, I, I, I didn't catch the front brakes because the dust cover was on. You took the, the lower dust cover off, or I don't know if, I think it was the lower, or yeah. left or right, I don't know if Just that was Just a picture of it. Right, yeah, no, I, I seen that, and I agree. You know, the drums are drunk, the, 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 it, it needs shoes. It it's not a not a big deal. I just did uh, on my well, trucks. I didn't say that the brakes were a big deal. But no, but no, but this many, is many things wrong. It's out of service, but this this should never go on this far. This is what I've been screaming from the rooftops about is a maintenance program at this fire department. It's this should have never been this far. Kevin, we're, 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 we we can address this. All right. So oh, well, just give uh, the gentleman yeah, an opportunity yeah. to continue his presentation. Anything else on brakes, Sean? Questions. Well, I'm not opening up. Uh, when we do shoes and drums, when I quoted this job, um, slack adjusters are in failure. Um, you know, th this you should be have to cage those brakes to back them off. Uh, we just backed them off, which means the gears inside the slack adjusters are bad. The S cam bushings are bad, so it's not just a set of drums and shoes thrown on there. It's pulling the S cams out, changing them, putting S cam bushings in, putting slack adjusters on, and actuators. So it's it's a complete brake job. Uh, I wouldn't do anything less with, with the damage that I saw. But this is just chassis. And, and again, when you take the cost of your pump and add the needed chassis improvements to it, um, it it's, it's getting way up here. And my advice is simply stop. And back in January, I sent uh, an estimate in for the pump. And um, I was quite clear that uh, we expected to see substantial housing damage um, in print. I did it in January. It's not hiding anything. The bottom line is 25 year old pump in a busy department like Guilford and this is a busy department. Those those trucks pump all the time. That's no surprise to me. I saw that coming. If it had been my town 
I would have jumped up and down and said, do not take that pump apart, you're gonna open a can of worms. It's gonna be $30,000 to start to fix that truck. This is just some other items that you need to consider before you say, we're gonna fix the truck. I just want you to be aware of where you're going with cars. And we're not ahead of selling a truck. We had to tell you what's wrong with the truck and we had to basically provide the information that the selectmen requested. Where we go from here, we don't know. We don't have the money. It wasn't approved by the voters, so I don't see a I don't see a truck. I'm not here trying to sell another truck to the to the public. We're not really sure where we're going to go with it, but we're we're discussing the viability of, of Engine Four is what we're discussing yeah, right bottom now. Bottom left, you can see the gap in it. Rubber's broken. There's a big gap where it's been wearing around. Uh, some of the top left and top right are bad. The bottom right's not quite as bad. Um, but there is a gap there, so uh, just that, that's been that's been wearing a while. So. That's the, that's the support that goes across the front of the frame, that supports the bumper extension, the steering box, air tanks, all the valves and all that stuff out there. It's rotted through and cracked the length of the middle. Um, it doesn't look like much. Somebody can say, well, we can weld a new piece of steel in there. You've got to move all those air valves. I can guarantee you. When I start quoting a job like that, when you try to turn an air hose off on this end, it doesn't swivel. You gotta find it in the other end of wherever it's going and change the whole hose. It's just, it, it just goes on and on. It's not just getting in there and doing some welding. You gotta move valves out of the way and stop buying hoses. It gets to be a mess. The truck's 25 years old. I, I could say this, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a truck professional by any means, uh, but I did have the opportunity to get onto this truck, but prior to that, I think it was engine one when we replaced engine one, uh, we had it at, at the shop and we were going to spend some extensive money on a refurbishment project and once they get into it uh, we were notified and same thing board Mark Labonte was on the board with me at the time he and I went up with uh, then deputy Hayes before he was chief and it was an education then it was an education now to get underneath the truck and, and see you know to be able to see underneath it but I don't know what and I, I know that there's there are people that say oh well this can be fixed and this can be fixed we're looking at the whole package of what's going on with, with engine four. Mm -hmm. And if this was your 25 year old truck sitting in your driveway, and I said this before and last fall, and I don't want to be redundant, but when you're looking at 15 and possibly 20% of the purchase price to replace a 25 year old vehicle to be put to be put into repairs, and there's no guarantee we could put we could put sixty thousand dollars into this truck. And as much as people have said, well, it only has 79,000 miles on it, the motor goes a half a million miles. That's great, but the rest of the truck has to go with that motor. And, and what's being illustrated here uh, is a culmination of many, many things wrong with it. And when do you stop the bleeding? When do you, when do you address it? And I know, you know we're putting the, now we're caught before the horse because the vote has already been, been taken. We're in, you know, we're in trouble, but uh, this is what, and we've had people underneath the truck that say how viable this truck is. We're finding out now that it's not that viable. And uh, some of it was a surprise, some of it wasn't a surprise to us. Uh, the wiring issues, which is not even on the quote to, to address, is a few things that are on the quote. Uh, wiring is one of them, a lot of the electrical problems that we discussed earlier, the light bar, uh, the radiator, uh, certainly needs to be replaced, but tires was, was not in, in the quote as well. So these are additional items. Um, you know, we've been told that it was it's an extremely easy truck to rewire, that the firefighters could do it themselves. I could tell you that that's not gonna happen. Read a firefighter's job description. It's firefighter EMT, firefighter paramedic. They're firefighters, they're not rewiring commercial trucks. And you can imagine, you know, it's not like rewiring a a utility or utility trailer in your backyard where you, you know you just got to wire a couple of brake lights this is you know it's significant and as much as sometimes we, we hear that it's being I think it's being trivialized of how how easy these fixes are I don't I don't see that and we haven't seen that this is just uh, to tell you about the the inspection um, and I know the question was asked I'll reiterate it we called board of fire engineers called 
It was suggested to us to have a third party, knowing that this, this whole truck has been an uphill battle, that we better make sure that we have all of the information available. Uh, and we had a third party and it. it was a state trooper DOT, we weren't calling the dogs out, but as Doug had pointed out, uh, we found out some things that uh, we're, we're obviously not being treated right by the shop that that gave us the inspection sticker last time, and again, we're addressing it. Uh, but I agree, I agree, Doug. I, I, it's certainly not in just the last inspection that, that the truck has been deficient. These are the violations that were written up uh, by the DOT. And these are the violations. Obviously, we showed you more than just the violations. But these are the violations that had the truck towed back here. Um, here's one of the quotes. It's all itemized, but that breaks it down for you. And this is the pump quote, which is the big one. Um, because we need the entire pump housing, um, that's the number we're looking at. So the total between the two, you're looking at just short of $50,000. And again, that doesn't include wiring. It needs a light bar, needs tires, uh, electrical problem. We're not even sure exactly where the electrical problem lies. Rewiring the truck, or is it? All, we need to rewire the truck, but is it? Uh, you know, is it? A, is it an alternator problem? It's not putting out enough power. Um, the dash lights. The dash lights. That they're driving this. They're driving this truck with no dash lights in it. You know, it's. Uh, it has. The truck has issues. The light bar spins slowly because of the uh, lack of power. I think that's it, not to be the dead horse. Oh, no, it's the horse. Uh, it's our recommendation that uh, that we not put this kind of money into a 25-year-old truck. Uh, it, it, uh, it's been our contention all along, obviously. However, now we have even more information that I think further solidifies not putting that kind of money into the truck to get a year in the paper today we read possibly a year out of it other people have had said possibly three to five years out of it who knows who knows I just think that uh, knowing that the last truck that we purchased we purchased under duress in an emergency purchase we're trying to avoid that again um, and uh, and I'm not making the presentation for the truck but again the, the rates are low 50,000 a year for 10 years that's what we were pushing and I know it's a lot of money and I know it's taxpayers money but yeah, you also have another truck that's engine two that's sitting up there as as new as as new as people think it is. It's coming up on ten years old. So if we don't keep in line, and the town has gotten away from their capital improvement uh, programs, uh, and we've got to replace these things on a schedule. I realize it's a bad economy. However, the rates are good to to do this, and I just think that it's foolish to throw. Uh, it's the board of fire engineers' contention that it's foolish to throw this kind of money into this truck and we're here to see what we can do with this dilemma that's what it is and this is this was to provide you as much information as as we can provide you with and it's what was requested by the selectmen we'll see where we go yes john um when we look back at the getting back to the uh pump can you venture an opinion as to what would get it to this point um be it something typical or something non-typical? It's typical. Two things are contributing to this. Uh, one is, is plain and simple. It's called cavitation. Same thing happens in, in your engines, um, in your motor vehicles, typically in your larger diesel engines um, as, as you get vibration um, and called cavitation. It's when the, the water uh, goes into a negative pressure vacuum and forms little bubbles on the surface of the, of the metal and then bursts away. It actually takes microns of metal with it many, millions and millions of times. You do see some cavitation damage there. That's caused from um, changing flow and hose lines. When you, you, know, you set pressure running off a hydrant or running from draft, and then it goes up and changes, and, and in those moments it takes for it to, to uh, compensate its flow, you do get some cavitation. More importantly, we've been through just like every every uh, automotive went through an issue where they couldn't keep paint on the hoods of the pickup trucks and the roofs were rusting and it was bad metal and this and that. Constantly making improvements to the materials used in the fire apparatus. Um, we went from just basic iron. Um, they made the pumps out of a better material. 
and the plumbing kind of lagged behind. We had steel tanks for years. Tanks were rusting out, we're getting 14 years out of a steel tank, then we're welding on them, and then we're taking them out and replacing them. Went to galvanized, that seemed a little bit better. Um, then we went to poly tanks, best thing in the world. Finest thing that ever hit the fire service, as far as I'm concerned. You get a lifetime warranty. No corrosion, clean water, you don't get the flakes of rust in the, your relief valves. Solved all kinds of problems. Problem is that you have um, galvanic, um, I'm trying to think the last word, it, it, it's a reaction. A reaction um, used to go into the tanks because that's where all the water was stored. Now it's forced out of that poly and it heads right for the weakest point because we went with galvanized plumbing um, and it's going after the, 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 the cheapest iron that it can find or any iron it can find. We do put um, anodes and all our plumbing now, try to protect from that. We change them on a regular basis. That's 25 year old pump, it's well outlived its life expectancy. I expected to find that at 18, 19, 20 years old. And that also, kind of to answer your question, John, and correct me if I'm <coughs> wrong, uh, a lot of it has to do with what it's pumping, the type, type of water, water. That, the type of water that Guilford has and the sources that we're, New they're very England. silty, right? New England. Okay. So it's New England water. In yeah, general, you're, huh? you're gonna get some silt, you got river water when you pump from hydrants, you're gonna get some silt. Um, and it sand blasts as it goes through. It goes through that huge velocity. You've got to figure that this small port here is probably three inches by inch and three quarter wide. Um, that's half of 1,500 gallons a minute or 1,250 gallons a minute. There's 700 gallons a minute coming out of that little port. Any impurities that are in that water are going to kill anything it comes in contact with if it can. And so it impacts and throws it out. Um, just it's, it's those two things are the, the biggest thing. So Crook TV.